Uh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We want to thank God uh, once again uh, this day as we look into this very, very important subject in uh, any organization. Let me take this opportunity to greet the leadership of the church, uh, the overseer, uh, our district pastors, our regional pastors, elders and deacons and all those who are in leadership. Uh, it is that time once again where as a church we um, look into um, our uh, uh, conferences during the month of August where we'll be um, looking into our uh, family conventions. So today I'm going to be sharing on a very important subject in our church. Uh, or in any organization, I'm going to be talking uh, on leadership. Uh, we'll be ch uh, checking what is leadership, uh, what is every leader expected of, what is it that which we are expected of as leaders. Uh, in the book of uh, 1 Timothy, chapter number 5 and verse number 17, this is where I'm going to take my reading I will give us uh, quite a number of verses as we go along, uh, as we look into leadership. What is it which is called leadership? What are the benefits? Do we have any benefits in being leaders? Uh, Paul says here in 1 Timothy chapter number 5, verse number 17, Paul says the leaders or the elders, the elders who direct the affairs of the church well. This is very, very important. The elders who direct the affairs of the church well. And the opposite of that is there are some leaders who do not direct the affairs of the church well. But Paul is addressing the elders of the church or the elders who direct the affairs of the church well. Paul says they are worthy of double honor. The elders, the elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those who work in preaching and in teaching. This is what every leader is expected of, according to Paul here. If you do your work well as a leader, you will receive double honor. You will receive double honor. If you continue to do these other expectations again as leaders, the one who is good in preaching and teaching is worth of double honor. Paul is trying to talk to us. Paul is trying to show us the benefits of being a good leader, the benefits of leading the church of God well. You are worthy of double honor. Uh, Titus chapter number 2, this is very powerful. Titus chapter number 2, verses 7 and 8. Titus chapter number 2, verses 7 and 8. Uh, the Bible reads, in everything, not in some of the things, but the Bible reads, in everything, in everything. If the Bible that you have is yours, please underline the word everything. In everything, set them an example. As a leader, you have to lead by example. People must look at you and begin to pick up things which they can as well use in leadership. In everything, set them an example. Be a model, be a role model. When people look at you, when people see how you do things, people must be able to pick up one or two things which, help, which will help them in their lives as leaders. So in everything, set them an example. Be in front. Try by all means to do something which people will learn from you in everything set them an example by doing what is good. In everything set them an example by doing what is good. What does this mean? It means to say, even as you go to church, people, you must always remember that there are people who are looking at you, people who are watching uh, you, uh, trying to see how you do things, what time you come to church, what time you leave church, whether you attend all night prayers or not, in everything set them an example. 
It's not so many things which you need to tell people that you should do it this way. But there are certain things which you need to do, and as people will be watching you, they will quickly grasp how they should lead the church of God. So Titus says here, as a leader in everything, set them an example. Set them an example by doing what is good. Uh, Titus goes on to say, in your teaching, as you teach, in your teaching, show integrity. Be somebody who can be trusted, somebody who can be relied upon. In your teaching, show integrity. In your teaching, show seriousness. In your teaching, show soundness of speech. As a leader, you are not expected to just speak anyhow. You need to lead or show them by example. So in your teaching, in your teaching, show integrity. In your teaching, show seriousness. And in your teaching, show soundness of the speech. As a leader, you don't need to just speak anyhow. You must be able to, what you call selective of words. Don't just say out anything that comes in your mouth. Uh, your speech must be that one which uh, the Bible says, which is salted. Your speech, the speech that cannot be condemned. So that those, so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about you. Remember, as you do the work, people will be watching you, people will be looking at you. How do you uh, direct you, or how do you conduct yourself? How do you conduct yourself? How do you conduct yourself? In the book of First Corinthians chapter number 13, verse number 11, this is very important. Chapter number 13, verse number 11. The Bible says here, when I was a child, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. When I was a child, I spoke like a a child. I thought like a child. I also reasoned like a child. I will repeat again. This is very important. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. Which means, as, le as a leader, you need to mature. You need to mature. You don't need to remain as if you are a, a novice. You need to mature. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I also thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But listen to what Paul says. He says, but when I became a man, when I became a man, when I became a man, when I grew, when I grew, when I became a man, I put child ways behind. So as people will be looking at you, they need to see that our leader is growing. He doesn't act as if he is or she is still a child. Put away all child ways. I like um, um, uh, something from the book of uh, Matthew chapter number 14, verse 25. There is something for us to learn as leaders. It's not everything, like I said earlier on, that you need to tell people how things should be done. At times, people should just look at you and see how you do things, and they will act likewise. This is what we are going to see from the book of Matthew, chapter number 14, and verse number 25. The Bible reads on verse number 25, Matthew 14, 25. The Bible reads, during the fourth watch of the night, during the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the lake. Listen to verse number 26. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, when they saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. They had all the reasons to, to be terrified because Remember, this was Peter's profession, but throughout his fishing experience, he had never seen anybody or somebody walking on water, so they were justified to be terrified 
because this was their very first time to see somebody walking on water. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. And they thought it was a ghost. They said it was a ghost. In fact, they cry, cried out of fear because they had seen somebody walking on water which they have never seen before. I like verse number 27. The Bible says on verse number 27, But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Listen to verse number 28. Lord, if it is you. This is Peter now. Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. It's like um, Peter was saying, I've never seen this before. As you know, you found me doing my work in the ocean, in the sea. I was in fishing business, but I'm surprised to see you walking on water. If it is you, please bid me come. I also want to do exactly what I've seen you doing. So in leadership, this is what gave Peter this courage to be able to walk on water because he had seen his leader walking on water. Had he not seen his leader walking on water, there was no way he could have had that zeal to want to walk on water. So as a leader, at times, whatever you do, people will be watching you. And exactly what you, how you will be doing in the work of God, some people would want to do exactly how you are doing the work. So Peter is saying to Jesus, if it is you, please bid me come. I want to also walk on, to walk on water. Verse number 29 reads, come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat. This is what gave Peter the courage. To, go, to get out of the boat because he saw his leader walking on water and he, he didn't hesitate to get out of the water, to get out of the boat, to walk on water. So in leadership at times, in most cases, we have to lead by example. So Peter got out of the boat and he walked on water. And he walked towards Jesus. Don't read that other part that Peter saying because you, even in the dish, you cannot walk. Peter saw his leader walking on water, and he said, that which I have seen my leader doing, me too, I can do likewise. Me too, I can do exactly what my leader is doing. Peter did not walk on water because of faith. He walked on water because he saw his leader, his mentor, walking on water, and he said, me too, I can walk on water. As long as my leader has shown me that it's possible that one can walk on water, me too, I can walk on water. So as a leader, you must lead them by example. This is what we read in the book of Titus. In everything, lead them by example. Show them by example. This is the first time, or oh, this was the pit, this was Peter's very first time to see somebody walking on water. And this gave him courage to also say, me too, I can walk on water. Because I had seen, I had, I've seen my master, my leader, walking on water as though he was walking on dry ground. Leaders, you must lead by example. Lead by example. Leadership is the ability. What is leadership? Leadership is the ability to persuade others to meet defined objectives. There are certain things which people will be terrified to be doing, but when they see their leaders doing, leadership is the ability to persuade, not to force. Leadership is the ability to persuade others to meet defined objectives, to lead the rest to a higher level, to lead others to a higher level, level, to lead others to a higher level. Leadership is influence. You must be able to influence others to do good. The things they would have never imagined that they were going to be able to do. But if you influence them, good influence, leadership is influence. Leadership is influence. If you influence others to do good, you will be surprised to, to see them doing exactly, exactly the same. I, 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 will, I will read something from the book of Exodus. 
Exodus chapter number um, 35. There is a very interesting story from that portion of scripture, chapter number 35, chapter number 35 of the book of Exodus. I will read that portion of scripture. It is very important, very, very important. Exodus chapter number 35, and I'm going to take my reading from verse number 4. This portion of scripture, there is something for us to learn. Leadership is influence. Chapter number 35, verse number 4. The Bible reads here, Moses said to the whole Israelite community, this is what the Lord has commanded. From what you have, take an offering for the Lord. Everyone, I like the word everyone. Everyone, everyone, everyone. Leadership is influence. Everyone, everyone, everyone who is willing is to bring. Everyone who is willing is to bring to the Lord an offering. And these are the items they were supposed to bring. Moses is now telling them what they should bring so as to be able to construct the sanctuary of the Lord. He says to the Israelites community, this is what the Lord says, we are ready to build the tabernacle, but this is what we are expected to bring. Number one, go and bring to the Lord the offering, offering of gold. Those who could not bring an offering of gold, but they could also bring silver. Those who could not bring silver, they were expected to bring bronze. bronze. Those who could not bring bronze, they were also expected to uh, bring blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and a fine linen. Each one of them, that which he or she could afford to bring, everyone. This is what I call leadership is influence. They brought these things. There were some brought hides of sea cows. Those who could not bring certain things, they also brought acacia wood. And they also brought olive oil. It was after Moses as their leader influenced those who were following him. They brought all these things. I like verse number 20. Listen to verse number 20 of the same book, chapter number 35 and verse number 20. Then the wall, after Moses had communicated, leadership is communication. Communication skills is very, very important as you lead the people. Communicate with the people well. Make them to understand the objectives. Make them to understand the, lead, the needs. Whatever is needed there, people say everything rises on leadership and everything falls on leadership. So verse number 20 says here, then the whole Israelites, all of them, after Moses had influenced them, the whole Israelite community, all of them, the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence. And everyone, listen to this, after they had gone, they did not go forever. They brought everyone, everyone, that's verse number 21, and everyone who was willing and whose heart moved him came. They did not go forever. They came back. That's verse number 21. And everyone who was willing and whose heart moved him came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work of the tent of meeting, for all its services, and for the sacred garments. Everyone withdrew and everyone came. Leadership is influence. Listen to verse number 22. This is very powerful. All who were willing... All who were willing, that's verse number 22, all who were willing, men and the women alike, came and they brought. All who were willing, men and the women, all of them, they withdrew from Moses. And they, all of them came back, all of them, men and women alike, they came and they brought. What did they bring? Number one, they brought gold. They brought jewelry of all kinds. They brought brooches. Leadership is influence. Each one of them had something to give to the Lord because their leader had influenced them. They brought brooches. Those who could not bring brooches, they brought earrings. Some brought rings and some brought ornaments. They all, they all, not some of them, they all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. After Moses, their leader had influenced them. 
So there is no reason for one to say, if there is a project to be done at your church, there is no reason for one to say, Awa na no, your duty as an elder is to influence them to do that which they never expected that they were able to do. So this is what happened here when Moses spoke to the people of Israel. Each one of them was influenced enough to bring something to build the tent of meeting. They brought all these things. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Everyone, everyone who had blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen, or goat's hair, ram skin, dyed ready, and uh, whatever, he people brought. Now, verse number 24 uh, reads, those presenting an offering of silver, some brought silver, and uh, some brought bronze, some brought um, many kinds of things. Uh, the, everyone brought to the Lord. I like verse number 27. This is very powerful. Verse number 27 of chapter number 35. This is powerful. The leaders, the leaders brought onyx stones. It's like the leaders were saying, we are the leaders of the community. We cannot be seen to be bringing acacia wood as a leader. I cannot be seen to be bringing goat's hair as a leader. I cannot be seen to be bringing some material as a leader. They brought things of value as a leader. You must lead by example. You must learn to go an extra mile. You must learn to go an extra mile. When others are doing certain things, you as a leader, you must be seen to be going an extra mile. I'll read again verse number 27. The leaders brought onyx stones. They said we cannot bring God's hair. They brought onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the effort and the breastplate. Listen to this, verse number 28. They also brought spices. The leaders, they brought spices. They brought spices and the olive oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and the women who were willing brought to the Lord. All of them, they brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work of the Lord through Moses, which Moses had commanded. All of them, each one of them brought something. Each one of them brought something because their leader Moses had influenced them well and they grasped the vision of their leader. So we are expected as leaders to make sure that we set benchmarks. We influence people to be able to do or to go an extra mile. After people had brought all these things now, now, uh, verse number 30 reads, Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has chosen Bazarel, son of Uri, the son of Uru, and filled him with his skill, and has filled him with ability. In leadership, as you are leaders, maybe you might be 20 at your district, you might be 100 at your district, but you must differ in the sense that God has given us, each one of us, special ability, special talents. So this is what you are seeing here. Moses is saying God has given Bazarel the ability and the knowledge in all kinds of crafts. In all kinds of, of crafts. I like verse number, uh, let's quickly go to chapter number 36 of the same book. Uh, Exodus chapter number 36 from verse number 1. Now listen to this. So Bazarel Oholiab and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary are uh, to do the work just as the Lord has commanded. Now, it looks like here Moses is now appointing a finance committee because the children of Israel had brought so many items and now a finance committee was needed so Moses knew who was able to do what. As a leader, your leader too must be able to know what are you capable of doing. What are you capable of doing? That which other leaders are not able to do. What are you capable of doing? So listen to verse number 2 of chapter number 36 
or the book of Exodus. Verse number two reads, Then Moses summoned Basileth and Oholiab and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability and who was willing to come and do the work. They were willing. A leader must cause people to be willing to come to do the work. Now, these people now, the finance committee, verse number three, they received from Moses all the offerings, all the offerings they received from Moses, all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of the construction of the sanctuary. It was after their leader Moses had influenced them. Each one of them departed with Drew from Moses and they didn't go forever. They came back and they brought things which then caused Moses to put in a finance committee to be responsible of taking charge of the things which the Israelites had brought. I like it. I will read again verse number three. They received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the people, I like this. Influence, I like this. Leadership is influence. The people and the people and the people continued to bring. The people continued to bring. You can't tell me that people are not willing to give. No. As a leader, influence your people to do those things which they never thought they were able to do. The people continued, the people continued to bring, they continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. What does this mean? It means before they went for their other duties, they made sure that they passed by the church to leave their offering. Not for a day, not for two days. Morning after morning, they continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. Leadership is influence. Cause people to do things they never expected that they were able to do. They continued to bring morning after morning. So all the skilled craftsmen who were doing all the work, that's verse 4, so all the skilled craftsmen who were doing all the work of the sanctuary left their work to go where? They left their work and said to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough. I like that. Leadership is influence. People brought more than what was required. People brought what, more th what was more than what was expected of them until the finance committee had to go to Moses to report, to say, say, people have brought more than what we needed. Leadership is influence. The people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord commanded to be done. So if you talk to your people, this is what we call leadership. If you talk to people, those who are not even willing, some of you, uh, you are married. The, the one who is your wife today, maybe she never wanted to marry you. But because you managed to persuade, you managed to influence, you managed to speak good. Somebody who never expected to be married by you. But because you had that ability, you had that tactic to be able to talk and convince her, she is your wife today. This is the reason why we say leadership is the ability to persuade others to meet defined objectives. The people brought more than what they were expected. And the finance committee had to go to Moses to report to say, say people have brought more than what is required. Listen to verse number six, very powerful, very powerful. Then Moses gave an order. After he had influenced them to go and bring items to build the sanctuary, after the finance committee had reported that people had brought more than what was required, verse number six says, then Moses gave an order. What was the order? Moses gave an order and they sent this word. Throughout the camp, they sent this word throughout the camp. No man, hallelujah, no man, hallelujah, or a woman is to make anything. No man or a woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. No man should bring anything 
And so the people, so the people were restrained from bringing more. That's good leadership. You talk to your people, you talk to your followers, and they bring more than what you had asked from them. This is what happened here. All men, all men, all women were asked not to bring anything again because what they had brought was more than enough. Leadership is influence. And so people were restrained from bringing more because what already had was more than enough to do the work. I want to challenge us this day as a leader. Leadership is influence. Leadership, you, you, you have to be in the forefront doing or walking or taking an extra mile as people will be watching you. This is what we see here. This is what we saw from Jesus. He led them by example. We saw Peter walking on water simply because he had seen his leader walking on water as well. And don't forget what Titus told us, that in everything show them by an example. Don't forget what uh, Timothy told us, that uh, the leaders of the church who directs the affairs of the church well are worth of double honor. As I conclude this day, I want to continue to encourage you. I want to continue to encourage you. Leadership, leadership is influence. I want to quote what the servant and apostle of God says, our, 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 our father, uh, in his book, in his book, I want to uh, say something. Laws and the responsibilities of a leader. Laws and the responsibilities of a leader. This is what the president and founder of this great church uh, says in this book. He says, he says here, leadership is the ability to persuade the others. He goes on to say here, leadership is influence. He goes on to say in this book, laws and the responsibilities of a leader. The president of this church, this is what he writes. Listen, the president of Zayoja Forward in Faith Ministries, he writes, a leader is one who guides a leader is one who guides. A leader is one who guides activities of others. And he acts and performs to bring about those activities. This is what the president and founder of Forward in Faith says. He says, a true leader must have a strong drive. A strong drive, not a weak drive. A true leader must have a strong drive. A strong drive drive to take the initiative which means he has to be in front. He must have a strong drive to take the initiative to work. He goes on to say a leader should not resist change. If you are to be a good leader you don't need to resist change. A leader should not resist change. Actually if you resist change, change will change you. So you don't need to resist change. You would need to accept change. It's better to change before change changes you. Because if you refuse to change, definitely change will change you. He goes on to say, a good leader in this book. He says, a good leader, a good leader promotes others. A good leader promotes others. This is where we have challenges with so many leaders, especially in our church. If somebody is an elder and now... Maybe during your DC or during your PC, maybe the overseer or the pastor is now contemplating of elevating other deacons to be elders. This is where we, fear, we, we, we face some challenges from other leaders. A leader must be happy to see others being promoted, being Elevated. A good leader, this is what the, the president and the founder of this great church writes in this book. A good leader promotes others. Some leaders are always against others being elevated. Some can even say, Asata Akura, if we were to ask you. Those who were willing, to see you being elevated. They tolerated you. They had, a long, they had a long suffering with you to make sure that you come in as a leader. Today, some of you are coordinating elders. Some of you are in the finance committee. Some of you are so, you are prominent people in the church. 
people of influence, but you were not like that. But somebody, somebody promoted you. How come that now you are promoted, you are now, you have now been elevated, you are on that position, and you are not willing to see others being elevated. A good leader promotes others. Some leaders are always against others being elevated. I want to say to you, a good leader must be in a position to elevate others. I want to conclude by saying leadership is the ability to persuade others to meet defined objectives. Leadership is influence, cause people to, to go an extra mile. If you do that, you will surely grow as a leader. As I conclude, I want to pray. As I pray, I would love or ask you to raise up your hands. As you raise up your hands, raise up your faith. Uh, endeavor to be a good leader. No one was born leader. No one was born leader. But learn to be a good leader. Be humble to those who are above you and be good to those who are under you. Because one of these days, you will need their services. I'm, ra I'm raising my hands right now to pray for you, for you to be a good leader. Especially in 2020, you need to be a good leader. I'm praying for you right now. Our Heavenly Father, as I raise my hands this day, to bless the leadership of the church. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let your angels teach us to be good leaders. Let your angels guide us to be good leaders. We are not able to be good leaders on our own. We need your guidance. We need to be directed by you. We need your direction. We need your favor. We need your grace. It is not easy to lead others, but we pray that Father God, you stretch your hands upon our lives. Father, cause us to be good leaders. Cause us to want to learn more. As we have learned that leadership is influence. Cause us to be able to influence others, to do good. I bless the leadership of the church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless. Come in time.